Podcast by Friday, episode 28. And on today's show, we are going to talk about quick tips and tricks to get more traffic to your podcast. And during this episode, you're going to hear us list a number of helpful tools that we have found we've used ourselves and which have helped us to gain more traffic. But sometimes it makes us tongue-tied. Here's what I'm talking about. Tips and tricks, manuals and how-tos, uh, that sort of thing. Computer tricks, trip. <laughs> Let's that again. I was wondering how long that would take. I was wondering myself too before I heard it come in. <laughs> As you can see, we are in for a good time. So not only are we going to share with you what works and what does not work, but we're also going to have just, you're going to hear us in raw and unfiltered moments throughout this episode. So st stay tuned. And here is Podcast for Friday with Bill Griggs and Kingsley Grant. We help people to create their minimal viable podcast by taking bold action to defeat procrastination to get their voices heard. I am Kings of Grant. And I'm Bill Griggs. And we are the hosts of Podcast by Friday. Good morning, Kingsley Grant. How are you today? Hey, man. I am fantastic. It's a, a wonderful day. I, I've heard someone say many times, you know, I mean, not this person said to me that if I'm standing uh, in a vertical position, it's all good, you know. Uh, so <laughs> I'm, I'm even though I'm sitting here, but I'm still standing this morning. So that's great. So I'm, man, I'm, 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 I'm blessed. I'm, I'm doing great. Yourself? Oh, fantastic. Oh yeah, every day above room temperature is a great day. <laughs> 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 oh yeah, we uh, have no. been and we've been spending a lot of time uh, focusing on the things that we need to teach our listeners to help them get their podcast going. And, and it's been a real pleasure to finally get this stuff down in a nice sequential uh, order uh, so far. It, it has. I think, you know, it's really kind of helped us to be in a flow and to realize, okay, if we put ourselves in our listeners' shoes and say, well, what are some things they would be wanting right now to get their podcast up by Friday? then I think having put these last few episodes together, it kind of reminded me what, what I wanted to know what when I first started. So I think it's kind of took me, it take, has taken me back there. And I think that's where that listener is going to relate or resonate with them because it's almost like we are right where they are and say, hey, you know what? It's almost we are walking in your shoe at this time. Yeah, it's um, you know, it's one thing. They, there's a term they call the the curse of knowledge. You know, when when you know how to do something and you've had experience doing it, it's very difficult for you to explain it to somebody who hasn't done it before. You have to go back and put yourself back in the position that you were in 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 your mind um, when you started. And you you know, in, in some cases. You know, it may have been years ago, in some cases, maybe, you know, six months ago or whatever. And, you, you know, you forget all the little intricate parts that make uh, podcasting possible and make it uh, possible for you to get set up so that things work good. So um, this has been very good for me for us to focus on the exact steps, the exact things that we did in our podcast over time. To, to, to get our episodes out there and, and sounding the way that we want them to sound. Yeah, you know, I think it's also interesting because, you know, we take the um, things for granted sometimes, you know, that where we are at, like you mentioned, that everyone should know these things. But it's interesting to even in, to engage with uh, some of our people in our Facebook group at facebook.com slash groups podcast by Friday and to see this one the engagement, the questions or the comments are being made and someone who is not as far in the journey as we are. And they were asked a question that reminded us, wait a minute, you know, we need to even do a, a, an episode at some point on that question. So I think these are the ways to kind of bring us back to what it was like. And so I'm really in, enjoying myself and especially today's episode that we're going to be doing because sometimes we forget what it has taken us to get to where we are and some, tri some tricks or tools or tips or 
help or coaching, whatever it might be. And we are there where we are today, but the person who's listening right now obviously may not be where we are. And that's why we're providing these episodes um, to them. Yeah, speaking of that Facebook group, we've been doing an experiment inside the group concerning um, how quickly uh, we can build up the membership in the group. And we've had very good results in the last uh, week or so um, trying this. So if you'd like to join our group, please do. Again, it's at facebook.com slash groups slash podcast by Friday. And um, we are in the midst of a full-fledged scientific experiment with that group. And uh, we're going to share the results with all our listeners um, when we're done so that they can emulate it if they decide that building a Facebook group is something that they want to do. Uh, now, um, I, both I and Kingsley have had um, good success building Facebook groups uh, on our own. I, I have uh, one group that is nearly 10,000 members in it. Uh, the podcast by Friday group is just getting started and it's just building up, but it has experienced rapid growth. So the hope is that you'll come along, join us, and get to know some people and maybe get your podcast started. And that's the whole purpose of having the group as a community, a place where we can gather together and uh, exchange information. And I think it's also great because I, I think uh, if you can come in and, and even engage in these episodes you're listening to and ask follow-up questions that we may overlook something or said something you didn't understand or you may just find yourself saying, okay, you know what, I am not sure. Would you mind expanding on that? And we would be more than happy to do that. So we want to invite you to join us in that group. As Bill mentioned before, it's facebook.com slash groups slash podcast by Friday. So to, today we have a very exciting episode, Bill, that I want to begin to, to um, talk about to help our listener as they are in the process of launching their podcast by Friday. Excellent. Yeah. You know, we, we talk about the experiments and stuff that we were doing in the group and, and some of the quick tips and, and tricks that we gave uh, each other inside of that group. And that's what this episode, episode 26, or 8, excuse me, episode 28 is about quick tips and tricks to get more traffic to your podcast. So this all ties in. Everything is somehow related. And, uh, you know, we're glad to, to share that. Yeah, I'm really thinking about this because I, I find sometimes to get things done and to quickly, and it could be to just get our, our podcast out there, whether it's on social media or, you know, how to get it in the rankings or to have it on the first page of, of Google or where, whatever it might be. I think these are the things I'm looking forward to sharing. One of those tricks that I find that I wish I knew a long, I, I found this out some time back now, but when I first started, was using Pretty Link because, you know, I, oh, yeah. it's, it's it's really a very it's really made things pretty, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and I like the fact that we can use it for to help you in putting a better spin on what you want to call your your episode. So, Bill, tell us a little bit about your experience with Pretty Link and and why you began to use that. Well, Pretty Link is a URL shortener. It's a um, uh, sometimes when you, you get an episode that has a very long title, it's very difficult to remember. Um, but uh, if you convert it into a pretty link, it's a shorter, more user-friendly uh, URL that you can see. So, for instance, each of our podcast episodes have uh, some very um, – long titles. And let's take this episode, for example. It's uh, episode 28, Quick Tips and Tricks to Get More Traffic to Your Podcast. That's very long for you, the listener, to have to type in to find this episode. So we use Pretty Link to convert that into something that's very quick to type in. And that's podcastbyfriday.com slash 28. And it converts and uh, it takes that information, that long URL title, and points it to the short one, which is the number 28. 
And that's what Pretty Link does. It makes it really pretty small, short link that you can post inside of your uh, um, your text and inside of your um, uh, blog post or, or what have you. Uh, something that's useful and quick to type. Social media, you know, anywhere you want to use that. Then for example, we could also, if we wanted to put a link on this episode and say, you know, I want to put on there, you know, this episode 28 that says quick tips and tricks to get more traffic to your podcast. And I wanted to put Bill's name. I could just say podcastbyfriday.com slash Bill Griggs in one word. Mm -hmm. That would also get us to the very same page and this episode because Pretty Link shortens that long name, as Bill mentioned, and substitute his name with the extended name that we just uh, mentioned. And so you go and search for that, which is easier to remember, is portable, it's memorable, you know, it's transportable. So you can tell someone, hey, listen to episode 28 about quick tips. Oh, I can't remember all the extended long name, but I know just put in podcastbyfriday.com slash 28 and you'll get all the information. See how easier that is to remember? That's what Pretty mm -hmm. Link does as well as a whole lot more things. And now, um, Pretty Link is a plugin for WordPress um, and it's free for the basic um, Pretty Links, you can do a lot of uh, stuff. In fact, I, um, we use that. But there's also a paid version uh, of it. And, um, you know, I'm as we sorry, I'm typing it up to, to, to try and look at uh, the URL for uh, Pretty Links is um, so that we can share that with you. But it is one of the most useful um, apps that I have. Um, on my uh, podcast, and, and uh, I, I think it's something that you could use. Uh, it's also very helpful later on when you get more advanced and start monetizing your podcast with things like affiliate links or um, courses or other um, other programs that you want people to have access to. Maybe you're giving away a free ebook. Um, you don't want folks to have to type long things. You come up with a common name that they'll they be able to use, you create a pretty link and it takes them directly to your content, to your affiliate link, to your uh, program. So, uh, you know, it's very, uh, very useful tool. And and uh, I think that the, the, you mentioned about the link for that is pretty, we have all the, in the show notes again at podcastbyfriday.com slash 28, you'll find the links to um, prettylinkpro.com. That's where you'll find the, 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 the plugin you use in your WordPress. So we'll have that in the, in the show notes for you so you don't have to go looking for it. So Bill, we've um, spoken about Pretty Link, but I found another thing which is so important, even as this, the title of this show, this episode is Quick Tips and Tricks to Get More Traffic to Your Podcast. In that one heading, we have a number of key, what's called keywords, right? And so people can be mm -hmm. searching for something and they'll come across this episode even not knowing we had done something like this. So the keywords are helpful. And how would you describe why we use keywords? And even in this one, I can see right away tips and tricks. People might be typing for anything. It may not be a podcast related, but it may be something they're trying to have a party. And then this episode comes up because tips and tricks. So can tell a little bit more about keywords and why do we use that in, um, for, for our podcast? Uh, keywords are a, a very uh, essential part of how things get found on the Internet. The Internet is, is essentially a giant search engine. And people, when they're looking for information on something, they'll type words that you know mean things to them. So if we were trying to find out about um, URL shorteners, for instance, um, we might not think to use the word URL shortener or pretty link or, or whatever. Um, we might think smaller link or, or something or, you know, whatever we can logically think of, um, we can type it in and um, we will get some results through a search engine, whether it's Google or, or whatever. Let's just stick with Google right now because it's probably the 500-pound uh, gorilla <laughs> in the room. Um, actually, gorillas probably weigh more than 500 pounds. Who knows? Anyway, uh, <laughs> so 
whatever the subject is that you're trying to find information on, you type it in and Google spits out results. And if you look at those results that Google spits out, it also tells you how many other people have searched for that word. And that's useful information because you can, um, you can take those, the search results that Google gives you to dig a little bit deeper and, and find out the actual words that uh, people are using when they're looking for uh, information on that topic. And uh, that can be a very uh, useful thing um, to do. So you want to make sure that when you title your article for, uh, for your podcast that you use keywords in the title and in the headings throughout the uh, information that you put on your page in your show notes and, and, and otherwise so that people have a better chance of um, finding you and uh, they have a better chance of uh, getting to your content. So um, one of the things that I think um, uh, that I would do is I, I would go and I would check out some keyword uh, tools. And one way to find some of the tools that you can use to do keywords is to just type um, keyword tools. And, and you'll most likely come up with Google's keyword uh, search tools. And, you know, that would be something that you could use to search for keywords. You know, I love the big phrase you used earlier about the 500 pounds. I had to go back to that a little bit, gorilla of Google, because it, it does feel that way. Cause, and and I, why, why I want to mention that, Bill, because sometimes I find our, um, a person listening, when they think about all that they had to do, and, and, you know, I'm so glad we're doing this episode, because we're taking away that fear, that, that humongous feeling, and breaking it down to smaller bites. And so when I use the word 500 pound gorilla as Google, um, some people might be thinking, oh man, you know, this is like seems so overwhelming. No, 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 no. We are walking you through a very shortened, <laughs> very quicker, easier way and breaking it down in this chunk, in these bites. And so I, I think that um, the idea of the keyword search is so key um, to the, uh, this, the, um, the idea of your podcast being able to get more traffic. And it's important that you look for, I believe, Bill, and you have done that yourself is to see what it is that a person might be frequently searching for and tie that, if possible, in the name, in your heading of your, your show so people who are looking for that. And one thing I want to mention here, Bill, I've done uh, many times is going to Google, and I'll search for, for example, a phrase that I might be thinking of and see if, how often is that being searched for. Mm-hmm. And then use that phrase and see, can I even tie that in my head in because in my title, because that is something that tells me people are searching for that phrase very often. And that is one way to get more traffic, I believe, to your website using keywords in your title um, uh, of, of, your, of your show. Yeah. And, and let, let's give, an, uh, let's give a, a concrete example to kind of drive this home. Now, um, one of the tools that you could use is Google AdWords uh, keyword um, tool to help you find keywords. But if you're doing it strictly up in Google with in the regular Google search engine that you use every day, um, you know, you, there's no need to go to fancy tools or whatever. You can just type into Google what it is you want to search for. So um, maybe we want to find out about... Um, uh, adding uh, social media uh, link uh, to I, I don't know um, a podcast episode or something or maybe what, you know, be, pick a topic. What, what, what do we just say with the idea for our, this very title we have here? Tips and tricks, right? I just type mm -hmm. in tips and tricks because it's in our, it's in our heading. That has a hundred and hundred and eighteen million searches that's been done, right? It's mm -hmm. eighteen thousand one hundred searches per month on that term, tips and tricks. Mm -hmm. So that tells you it's a term that's being searched for very, very frequent, very, very often. And we know that this is a very good keyword that somebody's going to type in somehow, somewhere, and find and, and possibly come up with this episode, even though they may not have been looking for it. Yeah. 
Um, one thing to be aware of is Google serves up um, search that is relevant to your location as well. Um, if I type it in, I'll get a slightly different result than Kingsley will in Florida. Um, uh, I will get a, res a di slightly different result in uh, New York, but that's really nothing that can be concerned about because it's, it's just more relevant. Um, so, you know, we type in tics and tips and tricks and I, uh, I got 117 million results uh, for that. Um, just those words. Right. But uh, what's cool about what Google serves you up is a variety of things that get searched for tips and tricks dash Android tips and tricks dash magazine uh, life tricks, uh, you know, tips and tricks, manuals and how to's uh, that sort of thing. Computer ticks trip. I was wondering myself too before I heard it come in. <laughs> yep. Computer <laughs> tips and tricks, you know, each one of these things has a, a large amount of people searching for it. Let's just hit this computer tips and tricks just as the example um, you know, this just is right in the regular Google window that all of this popped up and, uh, you click on that and it takes you to a specific article that had, uh, that keywords and that was about that. And it, and it'll tell you information about, um, about this particular topic and how many people have searched it. So you could, you know, type that entire, um, title into your Google um, uh, search engine and it will give you another set of search results and another set of, um, uh, of data on how many times that has been searched for. In this case, 2,470,000 down from 117 million. So it's more specific. And every time you tunnel down, you could, you know, get a little further into the niche. So, um, we could spend all day on uh, on keywords, uh, on but keywords. I think it's very, very important though, Bill, because I think most times people will, will go and and be, be um, sometimes taken advantage of because someone would say, "Hey, if you want to rank in in the Google first page, let me you pay all this money to get there." And we're just simply saying, "Hey, here is a quick tip and trick. Doesn't cost you anything. Just a few maybe some minutes of searching and, and do some research, but you can find yourself." really get um you know your heading your title found a bit easier and more traffic to your podcast another thing i find also bill sorry go ahead no feel go ahead now i want to go mention ahead, because i think this is also a searchable thing where people are more apt to look at especially in some social media is the kind of images you use with your podcast whether it's your you know, for your podcast show or the images used in your show notes. I find also that is a way because people are scanning things so much easier. And if we wanted to show this in, say, for example, on social media, I could take the image of this podcast by Friday.com slash 28. We create an image for this for every show. And I can put that image in Instagram, for example, or the image in Facebook or image on Twitter, wherever I want to. And people will keep it you catch your attention very quickly. And so what happened is they're going to more apt to want to, oh, become curious. Wait a minute. Quick tips and tricks to get more traffic to your podcast? What's that about? What happened is in the image, that is what catches their attention right away. Now they're like more apt to like click on it to find it because curiosity is what brings them there. And I find that even though your images, Google cannot search for images per se, but you can also create um alternate text. So when I when we put our image on our in our show notes, for example, we create an alternate text that include again the keyword. And I know this may sound a bit technical, but but trust me, it's not as hard as it sounds because what happened is you want your text to be found. So if someone opens up a search in Google and click on images, you want this to have your image also among rank about its first page on Google. To get that there is to put the name of your show into the text. For example, we'll, we'll put on our image, Podcast by Friday, and we'll put a portion of this, this um, title 
maybe quick tips and tricks or get more traffic in that um, alternate text for the image. That way, Google can still find it because of the text surrounding the image. Those images are really critical and crucial, especially now people are so sh um, short in their attention span. They don't want to read a lot of stuff. But see right away an image that's capturing, they are more apt to open that. And that's one way you can also add a quick tip and trick to, I believe, to get more eyeballs on what it is you want and eventually more listening to your podcast. Yeah, you hit that right on the nose, King. So that's kind of where I was going uh, uh, before uh, we started talking about images uh, was to tell uh, our listeners some of the places where they needed to put their keywords in order to um, get better results. And that's, for instance, is the alternate text inside of the images and uh, an association with the image. You've got to use your keywords um, in those places and throughout your documents in WordPress so that they get found. Because the, the more often you, uh, you see the keywords, um, the better your chances are of, of having a relevant article that is treated well by Google when it searches and indexes your uh, your episode. So very, very powerful tool uh, using keywords in conjunction with text and image and uh, uh, titles. Yeah. Uh, I H Go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah. You know, the, the title sizes uh, like um, the length of the title. Yeah. Well, inside of inside of uh, a, a WordPress document, you have headers. That's, that's what I'm reaching for. Okay. Uh, headers for different sections, you know, and the, uh, you know, there's H1, which is the biggest um, mm. header. There's H2, H3. Each one of those can also be keyword related. And um, having your keywords in the headers somewhere also increases your likelihood of being found and getting more listeners to your um, episode. That's a good, good point you're making because I think that way um, having the headers and, and, you know, H1, H2, I, I think that way also allows people to find to search quickly and uh, scan quickly but also it google allowed to stand up and they'll search that much quicker if, it, if it's in um, a header format but i also want to mention something about the image here bill because I, I know sometimes for me i had to go back recently and try to make the size of my images uh, smaller because they were taking up so much time to load the page and again if you want more traffic you're going to have to allow people to come get to your page and quickly access what it is you have on there. We recommend that you make sure that those images are in JPEG format and as small as possible just to maintain enough um, the quality, but not use a PNG or a large size file because that will slow you down. But also people who mm -hmm. want to come and gain traffic are not going to take the time to wait for that to happen. So you want to make sure. Yeah, you've got you about three seconds. Yeah, yeah right there, there you go. There you go. Yeah, um, the, the average person will only wait about three seconds for a page to load before they're, you know, on to yeah, something out of the else, and, <laughs> and if you're taking three minutes to load, it's it's uh, you know the chances are folks have already bounced off and gone somewhere else, and they may never come back. So you want to have your images optimized, just like King's is saying. Yeah. One uh, another thing I find, Bill, is which is very very important is tags. You know, I I didn't realize at first the importance of tags when I first started, and actually I didn't know what really tags were and the necessity of it until I what learned. Are uh, <laughs> what are they? Are they? Well, well, I, I, I tell our that's, listeners. That's a good question. You know, it's a way you to, um, for example, um, we are podcast, the word podcast can be a tag. So we would, in, our, in iTunes or YouTube or wherever we want to, that allow tags to allow our, our, um, our blog posts, our podcasts, whatever it is, we're associating a word that is searchable, that is um, frequently used to our, our show. So in this mm -hmm. podcast episode, we would put a tag. Podcast could be one word that could be a tag. Traffic or more traffic could be a tag. A tag could be a one word or a phrase that's used and mostly is separated by a comma, right? Mm -hmm. um, tips and tricks could be a tag or tips could be a tag, right? And that's the way I believe that it allows, again, more um, your, your show, your blog post, whatever it is, to be found much easier because those tags pop up and give you a, hey, I'm here. 
Yeah, you know what's what's cool about uh, tags is WordPress, uh, iTunes, Google, uh, YouTube, all of the, the, the places that you would put your episode allow tags. Some allow more than others. And Spreaker will allow you five tag, uh, tags per episode as you come in. But when you're formatting your web page where your um, – where your episode is kept, you can enter those tags and tags are keywords. Um, yeah. You know, but they're the individual keywords, but the, but the thing is, that's different is tags are not organic keywords. Tags are ones that you tell Google to look for. And um, Google wants you to help them know how to categorize your episode and the use of tags helps them to do that. And um, you can put very specific things. Like, for instance, if I were doing up this episode, one tag I would have in there would be pretty link. Another mm-hmm. might be UL shortener. Uh, I would have one that said keywords in there because we've talked about that. I'd have images. I'd have alt text in there. I'd have JPEG in there as tags. And all the other things that we're talking about so that um, folks would know that this one episode covers all of those things. And that's mm. that's where tags are handy and very useful. I didn't use tags when I first got started, but once I did, oh my goodness, it made a huge difference in how uh, how popular my articles uh, became and how many people people got to see my article. Yeah, and I think it's it's really um, important. You know, I think about if you go into a uh, a store and you look around for your clothing. A tag could be the size. So you're looking if you're a, a size 34. That's a tag that tells you don't look in a size 28 because really it's not going to fit you. You're going to go where the and I, I that's how I'm in my mind I'm visualizing a tag here. It drives you specifically to certain thing that you need and can be um, identified and accessed right away. So I use mm-hmm. that as an example. You know, you go into if you're a, a lady, you're on your size, whatever size, you know, petite size too. You're not going to go size 12 and 13 looking for a dress or whatever. You know, it's not going to, it's not for you. So the tag is very specific to whatever it is you're looking for. And people are always searching for certain things online. And we're saying, hey, you know what? It's in this store of our podcast. You can find images, URL, prayer link, whatever it is. We have it here in this store. And it Google will send it to them because they're looking for it. Mm-hmm. Yep. And you know, um, if you're not using tags, you're not doing it right. Period. Exactly. Drop mic. Drop mic. Move on. So yeah. another one which I, I think quick tip and tricks, uh, Bill, is Bitly. B I T dot L O Y. And I use this quite a bit. Now it's almost like Pretty Link. It's only that Pretty yeah. Link makes it prettier. Bitly. Yeah. They're both. Same, They're right? both URL shorteners, yeah. Yes. And what I like about Bitly, though, it just gives you, it can take a long um, URL and just give you a truncated, just, uh, you know, it's not pretty, but it's enough where you can use that and post, especially in social media, that allows you a certain length of words and so on. And it's easier, it's, man- it's more manageable. And also in Bitly, you can put a, if it's not already taken, you can put a, a word that makes sense, but the problem with Bitly is it will tell you, oh, someone else have used that word. So if we wanted to put in on Bitly, podcastbyfriday.com slash Bitly, I mean, use Bitly, sorry, B-I-T dot L-Y um, slash, say, podcast by Friday. If someone already have that, we won't get that. So it's shortened, but it's not as pretty as pre link. So you can use it, and we have the links in the show notes that you can go and experience it yourself. And always we're saying, hey, experiment with it. Don't just um, listen to us and not use them. Don't use all of them at one time, but use what is most helpful to you at the time you need it. Yeah, I think maybe the major difference between Bitly and Pretty Link is that um, Bitly automatically generates the, uh, the shortened URL yes. for you. Yeah. Uh, whereas Pretty Links gives you the option of typing in a longer one. Um, and in most use cases, I'm really not sure if Pretty Links will do an automated uh, shortener for you. I don't think they I do. Don't use it that way because I, I don't I, use it that way. But we, yeah. we'd have to check. But um, and, and maybe uh, I don't know if the pro version allows you to do that. I don't know, but I know I've in my use my experience. I've always got to put in what it is I want there. Um, mm-hmm. it, it does have a, when you go in, it has, it gives you 
like a number. So you're trying to put yeah. it in prelink, right? It's it's it, yeah, it does put a number, but you want to change that and put in your own your um short your own message or shortener um words or whatever you want to put there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. So you know, just another way of getting it done. Um, Bitly yeah. or Pretty Links, whichever you like the be- best. Um, uh, comes in really handy when you're doing Twitter comments or whatever. Instead of typing yes. long URLs, you just dump a little shortened URL in there. So another way I find able to get more traffic to your podcast is to put your podcast uh, URL in several places. And you want to make sure you get as much exposure as possible. And here's yeah. what I think the, the kind of, um, for me, where I first thought about this, Bill, this whole thing, be everywhere, right? And I, I try to be everywhere, and it sometimes becomes very, very difficult to manage and mm-hmm. get yourself in every place possible. But what I like is that you can actually take your show, like where we have this podcast by Friday, and the first one was Spreaker, and Spreaker will allow you to post that show right on as on different platforms. I have you know, my other podcast on, um, on Lipson, which is, uh, we talked about that in another episode, and it also allows you to post the, the show on iTunes, on YouTube, on my Facebook, on, you know, LinkedIn, on Pinterest. I mean, really, wherever it's that um, host work with as far as social media, it allows you to post it there in one shot and that way you can get more traffic and more exposure to your your content mm-hmm. yeah um it's 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 almost like syndicating your episode putting it out in multiple word. stations multiple channels uh uh to do um to get your message out there and and we talked about uh you, you just mentioned libsyn we talked about you know uh, where you're going to be hosting your um audio episodes back in episode 23 of podcast by Friday and uh, podcast media hosting solutions was, was that episode. And you can find that now here's a plug for both bit.ly and pretty link. You can find that by going to podcast by Friday.com slash two, three. That's shorter than podcast by Friday, episode 23 uh, podcast media hosting solutions, you know? So <laughs> that's why using what we, you know, practicing what we preach. So, um, getting back to the topic, uh, and no, I mean I think it's very important that you mentioned. I like the idea of the, this um, is like you know syncing your shows, uh, syndicating your shows on different platforms, and mm-hmm. um, that's really important. You brought that podcast episode in. We can put the links in the show notes as well. Sure. Now, um, you know, you've mentioned YouTube as one avenue of, of putting our episodes out there, and I do that with my. Um, both my podcast, which is cncroutertips.com, and um, this podcast, the podcast by Friday, and we get views from it. Uh, one of the things that you got to do, and I don't mean to take us off on too long of a tangent here, uh, in YouTube, you know, when it automatically puts our feed out there on YouTube and puts the episode out there, you got to go back and take the time to go into YouTube and put in what we just talked about two uh, items ago, your tags in there so that it can be found and searched better in YouTube. So uh, YouTube allows unlimited numbers of tags. So go in and put your tags down. You know, Make sure you also put in your name yes. as a tag uh, because if each of your episodes has your name in it, and this is specific to YouTube, um, when they play your episode, when they get at the end, you know, uh, YouTube recommends other things for you to watch, other things for you to view. But because your name was in there, it says, okay, who's ever watching this was interested in Bill Griggs' podcast. Let's serve them up in our list of things a couple of Bill Griggs' podcasts along with other things that re- relate to the other keywords. So your stuff gets played more often because it's associated with you. If they make it to the end, then they can get another chance to share your content. I like that. And so, again, it's another place you can have your, your show hosted, basically, and it's for free. And people who are there who want to listen to a, an audio, and uh, you can go. And you can also change the image on the YouTube 
that mm -hmm. that was rep represent your show. So you can do uh, some modification there. What I also like, um, Bill, is that I've used another tool that's called Buffer. There's others out there like Hootsuite and um, and others, but I know I've used Buffer, where I can load a buffer with a number of my shows. Say it could be we have 20. This is our 28th show right here. I could put in Buffer all 27 of our past episode and schedule those posts to my different social media platforms throughout the, for the next month or two. So once I have that there, it automatically posts there. And that's another trick that I believe and tip you want to know because this is how many people, if you are in social media, you say, well, how is it? Are people always on, 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 on social media because they're always posting certain things? My friend, most times they have it automated. It's, uh, they use a, a platform like Buffer or Hootsuite or something else to automatically, automatically post their these um, – content on a regular basis. It's interesting. My wife, the other day, she <clears throat> posted something through my buffer as it was automated, and she said, sent me a text, and she said, just try to call me, and I didn't answer the phone, and then when I did speak to her maybe later on, she said, oh, I saw you on Facebook at the time because you posted something. I thought you were available. I said, no, and she herself didn't realize it was something had been automatically, automatically posted, she thought I was actually on there at that time. So it's one way to, again, get more traffic because you're posting regularly uh, this, your show, not just one time, but maybe several times throughout the month. And one way to do that automatically is through Buffer or Hootsuite mm -hmm. or Edgar or one of those um, kind of uh, mm -hmm. yeah, platforms that does that for you. Right. Yeah. I, I do not use uh, automation on mine um, simply because I'm not organized enough. Uh, <laughs> you know, that's a la lazy man's way of doing it. But I do know that it does work. It's just one of those things that I have to sit down and focus on and, and spend a day to get it set up and um, let it go. Many people push back from using automation like Buffer or Hootsuite because they feel it it's somehow makes it, uh, you know, they get a little sleazy feeling or whatever. Well, it's not uh, really impersonal. <laughs> yeah, impersonal. But that's really not the case. You know, you say, and, and also, I don't want to, uh, I don't want my stuff going out there so often that, you know, my people get tired of it. Well, the reality of the situation is that people are not on social media 24-7. They see your stuff only when they come on to social media for, for a brief second. And if you haven't put out something for them to see, they'll miss you. They won't see it. And, uh, you know, it'll be ineffective. So, you know, you missed that entire chance. And it may be something that they were looking for and needed at that time, and it's not there because you didn't automate it so that they could see it. Um, uh, quick tangent. Just finished reading a, a fantastic book called Expert Secrets by um, um, Russell, Brunson. Russell, Russell Brunson. Very good book. He talks about how often he um, uh, tweets and, or, or puts out his, his comments, and he's in the thousands of times per day. Wow. <laughs> and <laughs> nobody uh, has good really brain. Complaining, uh, <laughs> complaining about that, and he's a very, very successful multi million. Uh, dollar, several multi-million dollar um, businesses that he does this with. So if you're worried about your little two or three uh, posts a day uh, thing in, in your buffer, your 27 or 28 posts going out a day, don't. Uh, there's no reason to worry about that. Just go ahead and use that technology and maybe that will be my uh, action step for myself this week is to go ahead and get set up with buffer and <laughs> put out my, my comments. We'll see how yeah. I do. All right. Well, you know, that's one of the challenges we'll be able to maybe if you want to find out, just ask Bill in the in the uh, Facebook group. Hey, Bill, hold him accountable. Did you do any of that yet? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, keep on me, folks. <laughs> so we talked about the idea of sharing this, um, you know, social media to post and share a link there through using Buffer or Hootsuite or your, your hosting, you know, um, platform, whether it's Libsyn or Spreaker or wherever you host your show to get the links and to get more, more exposure on a regular basis. But I, I know also, Bill, that when people come to your website sometimes and they, you have past shows that possibly 
they may not necessarily have heard of. Um, you can create what I, I I know. I like the fact that you use. I mean, I'm not using that right now, but the, a player that allows you to show the different shows that's been passed, and people can play them or select the ones, scroll through and select. I really like that. It's, it's almost an archive, but it's right there on the page. Can you talk about a little bit about how that um, have worked and the player that you use and why you chose that player? And I mean, there's, there's many out there, I'm sure. There's many players you could have used, but you use a particular one. Yes, there, there are many um, uh, podcast players, apps that you can put on your website so that people um, can find your episodes. The one that we use um, it, on the uh, podcastbyfriday.com site is uh, created by uh, one of our, uh, um, I, I, won't, I won't say um, close friends or anything, but we both met him and, and, and consider him to be a, a great resource. Pat Flynn puts out his smart podcast player um, app, and that's what we use. It allows us to... Um, Put our URL feed or, or our um, RSS feed, excuse me, not URL feed, our RS feed into this app, you know, real quick setting. You type it in uh, and it then goes out to our media hosting service, grabs that uh, information and it indexes it. And so it puts out so that it shows your current episode first and all your others uh, behind that with a little brief description that it pulls right from the show notes that you post. Uh, for your episode. And so it's very nicely organized. You can look down and you can see uh, just what each uh, one of the, you know, many uh, episodes that we have uh, posted, you know, it, it lets you see them in sequential order and pick and choose. And it also gives you the ability to click the link. You can speed it up. You can slow it down. You can go forward. You can go backwards inside of the episode and listen to it all in one place without having to leave your web page. Yeah, I like that because I think it, it's really, like I said, it's all um, in one place. And what and it can be a very uh, attractive piece of, you know, what you put on your, uh, and your actual show notes or actually the page or actually you put it on, I think somebody can put in the sidebar, a number of places you can have it. But it's really a great way, again, is to get more, people to come to your website and to stay there as long as possible. And this player, it, it, it invites them, it entices them to check something else out that may catch their eyes, they scroll through. And that's why, again, it's so important to have good, um, you know, good headers or good titles for your show because people are scrolling through, that would capture their eyes and they want to be, okay, let me see more about this. And they'll click on that and listen to that or download the show and possibly subscribe to your 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 podcast, and I believe that's really one another way to get more traffic to your site. Mm -hmm. One thing we didn't mention, Bill, and I think, go ahead. Yeah. Um, also, Spreaker has a free um, podcast okay. player that you can do for each of the episodes. Go ahead, Kingsley. What was no, the yeah. one thing that we had mentioned? Yeah, Listen also had the same thing as well. So I'm, I'm glad you mentioned yep. that too. Yep. We had when we talked earlier. I think it was on episode number. Um, Talk about iTunes uh, episode nineteen about be hosting your your podcast and um, you know different sites or places to do that and we we talked more about iTunes there as well and, and something that we I did not mention that I think is so important here because it will help to bring more traffic is if you are in a less competitive category in iTunes because for example even the business category and you're not like a a big time, you know, influencer. The chance is people are not going to find you and get more traffic to your your podcast. However, if you're in a less competitive category, I find, you know, that's something that really is is not just make up a category that is have mm -hmm. so disconnect from your your what you're doing. Obviously not, but it's less competitive. I believe that iTunes will allow people who are searching because iTunes is also a search engine. And people are searching in iTunes for there's a, whatever they're searching for, audio or video, they'll come across your podcast because it's in a less competitive category and it's probably in a higher, in the higher, you know, percentile of, 
uh, sorry, a percentile, the page, a file. How would you put that? Where it's page rank. Yeah. Page rank. That's it. Thank you. The rank, the page rank. You might be higher there because in the less competitive category, iTunes will show you to people who are searching for something that your show has to provide. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it it, um, it really is important when you decide where you're going to place your podcast uh, and you, when you're doing the description and you're submitting it to iTunes, you know, which category you choose. Um, if we were putting a, a, a podcast about podcasting inside of a science uh, category, <laughs> it probably would never get seen. Right. But um, if we put it into something that was slightly related to podcasting, but, you know, a, a different niche, maybe technology. Or um, mm. or broadcasting, um, mm. we have a better chance of getting found. It's a good example. I like that. Um, that's a pretty pretty example of that because um, sometimes we just want to have it, I like, the word I was looking for earlier too is very. It's has to be really relate, related to what it is you're doing. So, Bill, mm-hmm. I really think these are you know quick tips and tricks. But I I really in, you know enjoy the fact that we were able to give that listener some way of not just having your podcast created and then then what? We're simply saying, hey, you can boost that, your opportunity to be found and to get more eyeballs and earballs, so to speak, to mm-hmm. your show. And we talk about that uh, using Prelink. We talk about keywords, images, tags, using Bitly, the YouTube, and, and posting to different social media platform is in yeah. Buffer and or Hootsuite, um, you know, how to share your different links. We mentioned earlier, a, create a player for your website and choosing a less competitive category in iTunes. Now, this may sound like a 500-pound gorilla you mentioned earlier because it sounds so overwhelming, Bill. What would you suggest then to that listener as a person that may want to just maybe take a small bite out of this gorilla? <laughs> just pick one of these things. And concentrate on it for a while until you got it done. Then move on the list. Um, none of the, this doesn't all have to happen at once. You know, uh, you're going to be busy creating podcasts and, and putting out show notes and doing all those other many things that, that go. Uh, these are just the things that make it better, more effective, more um, uh, easy for you to be found. And if you concentrate on them a little bit at a time, you know, they, 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 there's the old saying, how do you eat an elephant? Well, one bite at a time. That's <laughs> the way you tackle these tips and tricks that we've laid out for you. You take them one at a time and you do one. When you get done, move on to the next one. Don't get overwhelmed. Don't get, get freaked out. And you don't have to do them all. Do the ones that, you know, suit your uh, temperament and uh, your skill set. And uh, each time you, you you work on one, you'll find that you'll get better results, period. You'll be more confident. But what I love also a bit is that we have a place that they can go and ask questions and interact with us. So if they feel overwhelmed and feel like, you know what, I need some clarity, we have a, a, a place just for that. We mentioned it earlier, a podcast, you know, a Facebook group at facebook.com slash groups slash podcast by Friday. We'll have the link in the show notes. Join mm-hmm. that group and interact, ask questions. And if you need some clarity, we will be there from time to time, you know, giving some feedback. But if you also want to directly uh, contact us, you can do that through an email at podcast at podcast by Friday.com. And we respond mm-hmm. to all of our emails. So we've given you opportunities to really get the help you need. So therefore there's no excuse. Let's start eating that gorilla. Well, elephant, whatever you want to eat. <laughs> Let's go get it one bite at a time. <laughs> All right. You know, I think you can't go wrong by uh, checking out the group. Uh, we have one uh, fellow just recently joined the, the group, uh, Calvin Ringgold Jr., uh, who used the methods that we've outlined in podcast by Friday over the, over the course of these episodes to launch his podcast. And he's... Uh, very su- successful so far. In fact, he's really cranking them out. He's got more episodes out than we have now. Um, <laughs> and, you know, you can get a chance to talk to him and many other people inside that group. So, you know, check it out. Facebook.com slash group slash podcast by Friday. Awesome. 
Looking forward to seeing you there. Hey, we got your name. We got your number. If you don't, we're going to come after you. <laughs> <laughs> come on in. The water's fine. Podcast by Friday. Take bold action to create your minimal viable podcast today. Check out new episodes at podcastbyfriday.com or on iTunes or Spreaker.